Hi, this is Tim here at Makers Machining. Just uh, wanted to get with you here now. Uh, we're going to start on our first project. I uh, had an introductory video that I made here some time ago and uh, had another small short video talking about the trade show in Chicago coming up in September. Um, in both uh, videos I said that I was going to be doing a few chapters of different topics on, on things that we're going to be learning and, and, and doing. Um, our first project is a is a block and it's going to have some uh, machine surfaces in it. I'm going to hold this thing up here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not or if you'll be able to in any way see what we've got here but uh, this is a block of steel. It's uh, one inch square and I've got a series of different holes in there that we're putting in. Uh, the drawing is a three view drawing. Uh, it shows the top view, the side view, and the end view. Um, we'll talk about drawings later, uh, but what um, what I promised to do was to have a number of different videos and create a library that you could go to as a resource for uh, identifying and, and doing different topics here. We're going to get right into machining this first block, and after we as we go through the block and after we've done the block, I will go through as we as we go here and tell you, okay, you're going to have a separate video on topic one, two, three. There's ten different topics. There's a recap at the end. So uh, we're going to get the block done so you can see some machining happening. And then we'll jump off to uh, uh, different operations that and, and, and do a little bit more elaborate discussion on those. So uh, the first thing we've got here is uh, the sketch or the print, which I just showed you here. It's kind of hard to look at the print and see what it is uh, from the short little picture I gave you so at some point here maybe we'll get a, a way we can uh, post that print specifically to you so you can look at it but uh, like I say the block is an inch square six inches long and we've got uh, five different holes that we're putting in here uh, of different shapes and sizes and whatnot and they're all one inch apart exactly so without further ado we're gonna uh, put this this piece into the machine here and just to quantify where we're at we're going to check to make sure that the vise is sitting straight on the machine because we need to have a way to verify uh, verify where this uh, part is going to be machined here so I'm going to check this thing here uh, get my indicator in here uh, we'll talk about indicators as we go along. Uh, they're a valuable tool for both lathe and milling operations. So I'm going to uh, bring this up here and I'm going to touch the indicator to the back jaw of the vise and I'm going to run, I'm sure I'm going the right way here, I'm going to run this vise back and forth here under the spindle and it doesn't have any run out. I'm going to see if I can bring this camera over here and show you, pardon my thumb there, uh, show you the indicator, if I can find it here. I'm, I'm going to have to maybe get me a, a videographer to do some of this uh, recording here. So let's see if I can get this here for you where you can see it. You can see the, the dial on the indicator here. Where's that guy at? There it is. I'm going to move the table back and forth. Oops. And you're going to see that that needle on that indicator didn't move until it got off the vise. So that is proof to you there, if it came through, if I had it set right, that is proof to you there that that vise is dead straight. Okay. Now that's that's important because uh, we're making this block here that's got a series of holes in it. If we're if we're going to be making a bunch of the same block, they all have to be accurately done so they all. Uh, will be interchangeable and they will fit and they'll be straight and square with what they're doing. Let's say this block that we're doing is going to be a block that holds and positions in some other part on some mechanical device. Uh, we want to make sure we've got the, uh, uh, the part set in there correctly. Okay, we know that the device is square. I've taken the liberty of sawing these to length already. They're one inch square steel bars. We'll talk about what kind of steel it is. We'll talk about ways to cut the material to size. Uh, but I've already sawed these off. 
and I'm going to set them in the machine here and we're going to square off the ends of them and measure them so we can uh, get the right uh, the right length on her. Uh, one thing I've got to do, I've got to grab some parallels here. Excuse me one second. I thought I had everything here on the machine, but uh, we'll probably have a couple things that need to be brought in here from off screen, so we'll do that. I'm setting some parallels in here so our workpiece is sitting up high enough so we can see where it's at, okay? Clamping it in the vise here. I've got a dead blow hammer. The red end is harder than the, the green end. And I, I hit it into the vise. I can't move the parallels underneath there, so I know that that thing's sitting on there good and flat. You don't have to beat the daylights out of it to get it to flat. Sometimes the harder you hit it, it comes loose. So we're gonna uh, get back over to the end of our part here. And forgive me if you can't see all this stuff up close and personal, but when we get into some of the subsequent videos here, you'll be able to see a little bit better. Okay, I saw cut these things. I saw cut these uh, blocks here. They finish at six in inches, so I've got a caliper here. I've got it zeroed out at zero when I close it all the way. I'm gonna measure the overall length of this block as it's cut right now. I left an eighth of an inch extra material on there because I'm gonna square it up and bring it to size. So, I uh, hope I can talk over the noise of the machine here. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna just touch the end of the piece and get it squared off a little bit to get a reference cut. Then we're gonna flip it around the other way and finish it to length. Okay, I just turned on the spindle and this is a right-handed cutter. If you are looking down at the cutter, from the motor part of the machine, it's gotta be turning clockwise. If you have it going the wrong rotation direction, it won't cut. It will probably ruin your cutter. So I'm gonna come up here and just touch off on the part. You can hear it cutting there maybe. I'm gonna move in about 10 thousandths. I'm gonna make a pass across there. And you can hear it cutting there maybe. A conventional direction cut. That means that the cutter is pushing the material away. I'm going to take another pass now and take off about five thousandths, and this is called a climb cut. Visualize if this table was uh, not rigid, this cutter is going to try to climb and pull that material into the cut. Our machine here, the, the table doesn't move that freely, so we don't have to worry about it. We're only going to do, do one piece for right now, but uh, We've got our, our reference cut made on the, on the end. We'll take it out of the vise. <coughs> and that gave us a real nice finish on the end of the part there. The conventional direction of cut will leave little whiskers and it won't be quite as smooth, but if you flip it around <coughs> and do uh, the, the climb cut for your last operation, you will get a great smooth finish on there. So I'm going to drop this bar back now. The, the side I just finished is here. I'm going to stick the piece in the vise on top of the parallels. Clamp the vise shut. Give it a pop there. Hit it there. Now my parallels didn't come quite tight there yet. I'm going to loosen this up again and just make sure I've got it set in there right. Like I said, we got about an eighth of an inch of stock to take off. And we'll be able to make our cut. We'll take one cut and see how much stock we've got to take off. Now, I'll, I'll say right now here, uh, you might see some machines, brand names, or tooling and whatnot. That's what I use. Uh, I'm not promoting anybody's specific machinery or types of equipment. That's up to you. What you have is what you use. Uh, same with, with me. I'm, I'm using the machines that I have at my disposal here, so that's what we're using. I, I will say that right now that I'm not here to promote anybody's product. It's just uh, what we use. Okay, uh, we've got one end finished, and now I'm going to turn it on and come over here. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to touch the part off. Okay. 
Okay, I, I touched the end. I'm going to take off about ten thousandths. Some people will go and zero the readout out or zero the handles out. I know I've got an eighth of an inch of material on there. I've taken ten thousandths off the one end, so that instead of an eighth of an inch, now I've got ten thousandths less. An eighth of an inch is how much in decimals? 0.125. One inch is a thousand thousandths. Half an inch is five hundred thousandths. Quarter inch is two hundred fifty thousandths. An eighth of an inch is half of that, 125. So we started out an eighth of an inch oversize. I've taken 10 off of one end, I've taken 10 off another. We still will have roughly 100 thousandths to machine off by the time we start doing our finished cutting. Okay, so we're walking across here. You can see the chips flying out of there maybe. We've made a pass. I'm going to move in 10 or another 5 thousandths roughly and, and take a climb cut. Nice uh, even chip coming off of there. I'm not doing this under power, I'm doing this feeding us across by hand. Okay, we're going to turn the spindle off and uh, we now have two finished ends. I'm going to take the caliper and make sure it's reading zero here. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's reading zero when it's all the way closed. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to measure this. I've got six inches and 67 thousandths on my length. So that means I've got 67 thousandths to take off to get my finished size. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna zero my machine here. I've got a digital readout on here. Uh, I'm gonna zero my, my X out at zero. Not everybody's got a digital readout on their milling machine. This happens to have a CNC control on it, uh, so I could do all these things with a CNC control. It's got a readout on it. Not everybody's going to have a machine that's got even a readout on it. We'll talk about how to do these same jobs with the same degree of accuracy on a manual machine with the bare necessities as compared to a CNC control. Either one will work. So we had 67 thousandths to take off. Our tolerance on our part of the title block set is plus or minus uh, two thousandths or three thousandths, I believe. So we're going to turn this thing on. Got to make sure the spindle goes in the correct rotation. You look at it when you turn it on, then you can see which way it's going. I, I tell you that from experience because when I was a youngster and the first time I ever tried to drill a hole, I couldn't get the hole to drill in a piece of sheet metal or a piece of steel. Couldn't figure out why. Turns out I had the spindle going backwards. It, the drill wouldn't cut. So, lesson learned right off the bat. So, I'll save you some grief and uh, tell you to watch the cutter which way it goes each time you turn it on. Because in the milling machine, which we're going to have a lot to talk about on what a milling machine is, a uh, milling machine can go on high or low gear, and when you switch gears, you have to switch the switch on in the opposite direction. Okay, so 67,000. Here we go. We're going to take off about 20,000. 23 thousandths there. This is going to take a little heavier cut. Cutter takes it off real nice. It's a uh, low carbon material, so it's not a real tough material to cut. So here, this, this is getting to the 40 thousandths material. off 40 thousandths. I'm going to take another 15 off. That'll put us at 55 thousandths that we've taken off. And then we're going to check our part again. Because in case I measured it correctly, I don't want to cut the part too short because there's no such thing as a put back on tool. And uh, I don't want to say I measured or I cut it three times and it's still too short. Uh, some of the typical jokes going around shops when guys uh, make a boo-boo, you know, you cut it off three times and it's still too short. Uh, we're going to be a little safe here because we don't want to redo the job twice. Okay, I'm at six inches, 11 thousandths. So I've got 11 thousandths to take off. I'm, I'm talking in thousandths again. That's typical language for machining. These machines 